Hello everyone, welcome to the subject IoT sensors and devices. In this particular unit, you are going to be looking about the different sensors and actuators. Okay, sensors, what are these sensors? These sensors measure any process, any data that is available in the form of a physical quantity. It could be any temperature, it could be pressure, it could be any type of value that is physical in nature around us, but that is not understood by the microcontroller. You need to convert that physical quantity into its equivalent electrical quantity, which can be processed by the controller. Now, after this electrical quantity is being processed, you will make a decision. And based on that decision, you will decide what is to be done with that particular data. What can be done with that is the action taken. And what can be done is by this actuator again. This actuator makes sure that you are taking that in the form of an output, which could be any display or any motor that is taking care of the particular action. So I repeat, sensor, it converts a physical quantity to an electrical quantity. And this electrical quantity, which is being processed, uh, a decision being taken over there, is to be converted back to a particular physical quantity, which is being displayed either in the form of a display or it can be in the form of a motor. Next, let us look a simple at a simple example of what is a sensor. What is a, a, a simple example is the light dependent resistor. Light dependent resistor is based on the concept of photons falling on the particular sensor. When photons are falling, you can see that the conductivity increases over here. When conductivity is increasing, you know that it is inversely proportional to resistance. So what is happening over there? When photons are falling on this particular LER, the resistance is going to be decreasing over here. So what is happening in this example, you can see that thousand luminescence, very bright light. When the luminescence is high, you can see that the resistance is very low. So high brightness is falling over here and the resistance is very low. But when you see that there is very less light falling over here, the resistance increases. So, when there is high light falling on that, you can see that the resistance is decreasing. When there is low light falling on the particular uh, uh, sensor, you can see that the resistance is to be increasing. This can be seen with this particular example. Look at this example over here. When the luminescence is 10, you can see that the resistance is very high. So when the luminescence is very high, the resistance becomes very low. You can see this from this example of this light intensity falling. When very bright light is there, 1000 luminescence, the resistance is very low. When the light is less, 10 luminescence, the resistance is very high over here. So it is sensing the amount of light falling over here and it has its own application. For example, uh, you can consider the simple street light as a basic example for this. Now, what is an actuator? As I told you, actuator converts the electrical quantity into a corresponding and equivalent physical quantity, which is used by us. Look at this particular example over here. In this example, you can see that temperature is detected in the form of heat over here. And this is done by the sensor, temperature sensor. This heat, when it goes beyond a particular value, we need to turn a particular sprinkler over here, which is available. How do I do that? So in this, you have in between this microcontroller and this particular switch. The temperature is given to this particular microcontroller, which is converted to an electrical quantity. If it is greater than a threshold level, some temperature, what is going to happen? You are going to control the switch. What what is this switch going to do? It is going to turn on a particular sprinkler, which is going to make sure water is falling and cools down the particular area. So this is where you have all these particular things, which is the basic example of your particular actuator. Now look at the difference between a sensor and actuator. Sensor converts physical quantities into its electrical signal. Actuator converts the electrical signal into a physical action. This acts on an input device and that is just placed at the input port. And this is an output device hence placed at the output port over here. Sensor takes input from the environment and senses the condition around it. Whereas the actuator, it takes input from the output conditioning signal and gives it to that particular corresponding system. When you look at the sensor, it gives output to input signal conditioning of the system and convert it to an electrical form. So it converts it to an electrical form, whereas this actuator converts the electrical signal into a particular load driven controlled signal. Next is your sensor. It gives information to the system about the environment. It gives this condition on the environment and what to monitor and what to control over there. Actuator, it accepts the particular command from the system and delivers it as a physical action. And what are the sensors? What physical quantities are there? Pressure, temperature, fluid levels, flow, vibration, speed, etc. These are just a few examples. But when it comes to actuators, you can see that controlling the valves, dampers, guide veins, moving an object from a place to another. All these are the example, basic examples of actuators. Now, we are going to be looking into the different types of actuators. First is an active 
passive and active and passive. What do you mean by passive? The, those that require an external power supply is called a passive sensor. Active sensor, those that do not require any power supply, external power supply is called an active. Look at this example of a simple thermocouple, which is a temperature sensor. In the active type, you can see that there is no power supply required to make this temperature sensor work. Depending on the heat available here, the voltage is varying. But when it comes to this passive sensor over here, you can see that it requires a power supply. Without the power supply, when there is change in heat, there will not be change in its corresponding voltage. So this is the basic difference between active and passive. One thing that I wanted to tell you is any sensor will convert its output into electrical. That is what I said earlier. That electrical could be in the form of a voltage or it could be in the form of resistance. So please remember these two. Any sensor will convert the physical quantity into a corresponding voltage or into its corresponding resistance. Please remember that always. Now, sensors can be further classified based on the particular uh, means of detection. It could be either electric detection, biological, chemical or radioactive detection. And it can also be depending upon the conversion phenomena, which is photoelectric light, heat, electrochemical based or it can be electromagnetic based and so on. Now, looking into the classifications further, sensors can be classified into analog and digital. What do you mean by an analog sensor? A sensor which is available, which takes a physical quantity, gives out an analog value and that analog value is given to the microcontroller. That is what you call as an analog sensor. So you, I hope you remember that in the previous video, I was talking about an analog to digital converter. That analog to digital converter is the one that is to be used over here. So this analog sensor is to be connected to my analog pin of my microcontroller. So any physical quantity is converted to its corresponding electrical quantity, but it is again analog in nature that analog in nature needs to be converted to a particular digital nature by this particular ADC and this is connected to my analog pin. What is happening in the case of a digital sensor? You have a sensor that convert, that takes any physical quantity. This sensor converts that analog into digital by itself. So it is not taking, uh, it is not depending on the microcontroller to convert the analog to digital. It converts the data to digital by itself and that digital value is given to the microcontroller. So I hope you would have understood that it is now connected to the digital pin of the microcontroller. It is not connected to the analog pin. It is connected to the digital pin. So an analog to digital converter is not required over here. So I hope you understand the difference. Analog sensor is converting a vertical quantity into an analog quantity, which is connected to an analog pin, which requires an analog to digital converter to convert it into a digital value to the microcontroller. But in the case of a digital sensor, the physical quantity is converted into a digital quantity by the analog to digital converter available in the sensor itself. And that digital quantity is directly given to the digital pin of your microcontroller, not having the requirement of an analog to digital converter. This digital data is directly processed by my microcontroller. So this is the next classification of sensors. So first one, the active and passive was the important category. And the second category of analog and digital is another important category. Most sensors that you purchase in the market are coming under the category of passive type of sensor. They require an additional power supply for it to work. Now, these are different types of sensors that are available. The first one is your color sensor over here. You can see that it will be measuring different colors that are available. So it will measure the color. It will uh, take that as a physical quantity and tell you what is the color that is available there. Next one is gas. What gas, LPG or it is carbon dioxide, whatever it can detect this. Alcohol can detect whether a person is drunk or not. Smoke sensor can detect whether fire is there or not. LDR light sensor, which can detect light, which we saw earlier. Proximity can tell whether a person is there or an object is there or not. Ultrasonic sensor can be used to measure dis uh, distances. Thermistor can be used to measure temperature. Soil moisture to tell how much of moisture is available in the soil which can be used for irrigation. Gyroscope can tell the orientation of a particular uh, device and photo that is used in your mobile phones for gaming and so on. Photo transistor light, it can tell what is the light intensity over there. It's another form of the LDR. Humidity sensor can be used to measure the temperature and humidity of a particular device. Touch sensor, it is it can be act it can act as a particular switch also, depending on a person touching it, what can happen? And if a person is not touching it, what can happen? So it can act as a simple switch over there. 
proximity infrared sensor depending on the infrared radiation that is available over there it can tell whether an object is in that particular radius of there or not lm35 specifically used to measure temperature only dht can be used to measure humidity and temperature this lm35 can be used to measure only temperature rain sensor can be used on the windshield of your particular car or whatever to measure whether rain is there to turn on the wiper ir sensor to you to detect where the heat is there in case in in turn to detect whether a particular object is there or not and this IR sensor transmitter type there will be one separate transmitter and receiver doing the same function of this IR sensor which we will be looking into detail later and last one this heart, uh, heart rate sensor which is used to measure the pulse of a particular person so these are just a few examples of the sensors available so there are many other sensors which can do different other uh, uh, functions which we need to do and all please remember will give you either an output of voltage or it will give you an output of resistance now look at the first type of sensor which is the humidity sensor and this comes under the category dh22 it is also named as am2302 and this dht22 digital humidity and temperature so it is now coming under the category of digital not analog sensor it is converting the analog quantity into digital by itself and this data is given to the microcontroller i hope you are able to understand this digital sensor it sends a digital signal and that is done by the digital thing. And these are the particular uh, uh, ranges and accuracy. Humidity it can measure. Humidity is measured in percentage. 100 percentage of water that can be available in air that is a maximum with respect to that as a reference how much of water content is available in the air that percentage is its humidity so 20 to 90 percent it's its accuracy it can be having an accuracy tolerance of plus or minus five percentage the temperature range is zero to 50 degrees and its tolerance is plus or minus two percent it can give you a value uh, equivalent to that operating voltage is from three to five point five volts and this is a front view of the the temperature sensor dht is of two types it can be either of three pin or it can be a four pin both are the same the only difference is in this one there is one pin called as not used so other pins are common one is the signal pin which is the pin that is connected to your microcontroller please remember it is an input device so data from here is coming to the sensor from sensor it is to be given to the microcontroller so it is an input pin and this is connected to your digital pin as it is a digital sensor it is taking care of the analog conversion and beyond that you have the supply and ground same supply ground and your input pin is available here in this four pin dht sensor you have one pin that is not used and that is normally the third pin available here so dht is the example for that it is used to measure the particular ratio of water content in air to the maximum potential of the air that it can hold water air how much of water it can hold based on that its capacity it is of uh, two types dht dht11 and dht22 these are the most commonly used types of sensors and these are the pins supply data not connected and ground Next one, how do you connect it over here to the Arduino? As I told you, you'll be connecting the signal pin to your particular Arduino, which is nothing but the digital pin of your Arduino, not the analog pin of your Arduino, to the digital pin of your Arduino. And it has the supply that is given, and it also has the ground that is given to it. This is what is acting here. This is another simple example of its connection. And uh, these are also here where you are using this DHT11 on the particular specific Arduino itself. Here it is connected to pin number seven. That's the basic difference. Now, it will be displaying the values on the serial monitor other than if you are not using an actuator, for example, an LCD display, it will be displaying it on the serial monitor of your Arduino screen itself. And for using this DHT, you need to download the library from the internet or you can go to the Arduino library and download it. So either you, if you're downloading it from the internet, you will be using the manual uh, uh, way of installing this library. Or if you are going to the particular sketch include library, add zip library, which is available on the internet, you're going to add it automatically, which is going to be through the online. DHT library file is very important because the key functions for getting the uh, humidity and temperature is available in this library only. So uh, nominally some sensors do not require additional library files in your program but some sensors like this DHT require an additional library file that is to be installed so that those instructions only can be used over here. Next, this is an example of a simple soil moisture sensor. You can see that the resistance is the output over here. So what is happening when water is there, the resistance is very low. When water is not there, the resistance is so high. So you can see no water resistance is high. When there is more water conduction between this plate 
and this plate is increasing. Water being a good conductor increase the conduction from this left side to the right side over here. So that is when the resistance is very low over here. Conduction is high. But when there is no water, there is no current flow from this side to this side. So that is where the resistance is very high. A simple example. Next one is your touch sensor. Look at this touch sensor over here. As I told you earlier in this video, touch sensor can be a simple switch. You touch it, what is going to happen? There is going to be an output. When you don't touch it, there is not going to be any input. So this is like a capacitor over here. So your human body acts as a ground. That's a negative terminal. A positive supply is applied over here. When this is happening, over here what will happen there is capacitance so when there is contact over here what is happening there is capacitance because capacitor is a parallel plate device it has negatives on one side it has positives accumulated on the other side so this is where charge is stored so when you touch this particular plate over here there is negative ground from your side and there is power supply applied over here so charge is accumulated and that is given to this output over here but when you are not touching this particular plate what is happening there is no negative on this side so all the charge is now going to the ground. So this is where the output is becoming zero. Touch, there is output. Don't touch, there is no output. So this is a very simple example of your zero and one. When there is contact, it is on. When there is no contact, it is equivalent to off. So this can be a good replacement of your particular switch that is available. You, you know that there are different types of switches available. There is sliding switch available. There is press button available, push button. Many things are there. If you don't have those switches which are there, you can just use this simple test sensor which can be used for that. And in this case, you can see that it has only three signals, supply, ground, power, ground, and your particular signal, which is nothing but your output, which is given as input to your particular microcontroller. And as you may have guessed it, it is given to the digital pin of your particular microcontroller because it is only going to do two functions, either check whether it is off or on. Next one is your flex sensor. What is a flex sensor? Depending on the resistance available over there, it is going to tell what is the what is the depending on the bend, it is going to tell how much of resistance is available over here. So this is that particular conductive ink over here. This is like your rubber band available. So when this particular rubber band is pulled, you can see that the conducting material decreases. So the corresponding resistance over there increases over there. So this is the particular condition in which your when you bend this particular uh, flex sensor, you can see that when it is flat, no bend. The resistance over here is 25 kilo ohm, very less. When you have bent it to around 45 degree, you can see that the resistance is increasing. When you bend it further, the resistance is further increasing. As I told you, this is the working principle of a rubber band. When you pull the rubber band over here, the conducting area is decreasing because when you pull it, it becomes thinner. When the rubber band is in normal position, it is very thick. When you pull it, it becomes thinner. So when it is becoming thinner over here, the conductivity is decreasing. And when conductivity is decreasing, as I told you, it is inversely proportional to resistance. The resistance increases over here. So when there is more bend over here, there is less conducting area, which increases the resistance. So for this particular condition, it can be used in different applications like uh, when you are using it in the, uh, what you say, fingers of your uh, uh, arm, when you bend a particular finger, you can say that what action is to be done. So this flex sensor, when placed on your, uh, uh, when placed on the gloves and placed on your finger and you bend it, what will happen? It is being used to tell a particular symbol which can be used for the uh, uh, hearing impaired people and people who are dumb. They are not able to hear what we say. So in that particular case, you can tell this uh, condition by using these particular uh, uh, sensors. So you can search for uh, projects which are related to flex sensors and its application to helping the people who are mute. That is the best application that you can search for. It can also be used behind doors. When you're opening the door and uh, when you're closing the door, please think of this application. It will be better if you think of what is the benefit of using this flex sensor over here. I'll just give you a glimpse. When the door is closed, the flex sensor is flat. When you're opening the door towards this side, you can see that the flex sensor will be bending over here. When there is a bend over here, you can see that there's a change in resistance. Depending on that resistance value, you can come to a conclusion that the door is open and so on. So this is a basic example of a flex sensor. LDR, we already saw this particular example example of this LDR. When there is no light falling on it, you can see that there is no conduction because resistance is high, but power supply was provided. So no conduction, power supply was there, but when there is photons available on this LDR, you can see that light is conducted towards the side. So conductivity is increasing when light is falling due to the photons available. And the model that you go, when you go into the market and buy is VH1750 or TSL2561. 
Next, accelerometer. When a particular object is moving and suddenly it is stopping, what is going to happen? You are assuming that there is a speed in, in there is a change in speed. That is what you call as acceleration. And that is what you mean by this accelerometer. It measures the sudden change in speed. How is it doing that? You can see that this green color plates over here are the non movable plates of a capacitor. And you know that the dielectric material over here, depending on the space between them, the capacitance increases. So this orange color device over here is a spring. So if the, uh, if the sensor is moving front, what will happen? The spring will move towards the front. If the accelerometer is moving in the opposite direction, this spring will move in the opposite direction. So you can see that this plate over here and this plate over here, the distance will vary based upon the spring. This is fixed. The green color portion is fixed, but this orange color portion changes its position depending upon the movement of this particular sensor. So depending on the movement, what is going to happen, the capacitance over here changes. This change in capacitance is going to help me in identifying whether there is a rapid change in movement of speed. And where can I use it? That is very important. Accident detection in automobiles. So when a vehicle is going at a particular speed and there is a sudden change in speed and it comes to a mute zero, what is happening? There is a sudden increase in capacitance value here. So that particular sudden change in capacitance is measured by my particular device over here. And that sudden change in capacitance changes my particular voltage. So as I told you again, every resistor will have voltage or resistance change. Capacitance change is equal to change in voltage, not change in current. So so this change in voltage of my capacitance will be in the one that is giving as input to my particular microcontroller. So this change in voltage, sudden change in voltage, I can take a corresponding action. As you know, the airbag comes out. So I don't have to wait for impact. Uh, automobile, I don't have to wait for an impact. I just need to measure the sudden change in uh, acceleration. And when it comes to an entire halt over there, that is where the airbags come out. That is where this accelerometer is going to help me a lot. So it is going to measure the sudden change in this dynamic force, moving forces that are available. So, and this accelerometer is a simple example where it is giving you the changes in X, Y, Z conditions over here. It has, as usual, the both supply and ground. They, and this is coming under this category of ADXL335. There is also another type of uh, accelerometer sensor. This is how, as I told you, it, you, you are going to connect it to your particular microcontroller. And uh, these are the pins that is how it is being connected over here. And uh, this is another type of accelerometer over here, which is using the concept of SCL and SDA. When you look into my previous video, you will be understanding that I2C protocol, where it is giving the data using serial communication, I2C. So here you see that there is only one supply, one ground, no X, Y, Z, just two pins over here. One is a serial clock and serial data. Through this particular data, what is going to happen? The data of X, Y, and Z is sent serially one after the other, and that is displayed on my serial monitor. So this is where I'm using this same accelerometer sensor, but I'm using only four pins. Instead of using the earlier five pins, I'm using just four pins over here using I2C protocol. That you'll be looking into the further videos. Applications, where am I going to use these accelerometers it is used for detecting earthquakes movement forward backward earthquake you are aware of that hard drive if my laptop hard drive is moving front and back it is understood that my hard drive is uh, loosened which can damage my particular hard drive so this is an uh, protection device over there accelerometer to make sure that the particular hard drive in my particular laptop is made onto a particular uh, compensatory opposite position. If the particular laptop is moving this way, the compensatory movement through my microcontroller can make to make the uh, particular hard drive move in the opposite direction. So which means I'm avoiding impact, which can save my particular hard drive. And it can also be used in uphill movement of objects or any other customized project that I want to do. And the customized uh, example was the one that I told about the car crash. And uh, next one is the gyroscope over here. Gyroscope. Accelerometer is to use the uh, measure the uh, acceleration that is change, sudden change in speed but if i want to measure that in the form of angle that is where i'm going to use this particular gyroscope gyroscope is going to measure the changes in uh, uh, what do you say axis acceleration along the particular axis acceleration in direction is with respect to accelerometer acceleration with respect to axis is what i call as a gyroscope and where do i use this uh, particular gyroscope i can use it in my particular
particular uh, uh, what do you say mobile phones for playing games and so on and the basic gyroscope example is your landscape and your particular portrait mode of your particular uh, mobile phone so depending on the axis of your mobile phone if the uh, landscape uh, orientation is enabled in your device what is going to happen orientation if it is enabled in your mobile phone it will come into landscape or portrait mode accordingly so this is where the gyroscope is used in that case again you will be using i2c protocol over here in this type of sensor scl and sda please remember this i2c protocol this is a commonly used protocol in many sensors that are available in the market so this is your gyro sensor gy5210 here it has a supply it has a ground it has scl and it has the sda and all of these are connected to your arduino and it is connected to your pc and these are connected to the corresponding pins over here and uh, it is using gyroscope it has 16 it has six uh, built in 16 a to d uh, channels so why are the six required over here in this gy521 three of them are used for accelerometer and another three of them are used for measuring the gyroscope so gyro can measure both accelerometer and the axis change so it has six inbuilt 16 a to d converters available in this gyroscope it uses i2c protocol it works in the range of 2.3 37 to 3.46 so you can see that it will not work with 5 volt power supply so it works with 3.46 so it is a, uh, a type of sensor in that category and uh, it has a regulator for this particular uh, board which is available there this is how the uh, 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 gyroscope will look like this is the sda and this is your acl pin and the supply and ground pin using these four pins alone you can connect it to your particular arduino device and you can take the corresponding output Next, what is a proximity sensor? Proximity is nothing but an infrared sensor detecting movement. So this proximity can detect movement either in the form of IR radiation that is infrared and laser or in the form of ultrasonic or in the form of Hall effect which is due to one example like a magnet and you have a metal and this particular metal is placed on a particular uh, wheel of your particular uh, device. So when this movement is available over here, when the wheel is rotating, what will happen? It will get detected by this magnet. Every time it detects the detection, the magnet in increments the count to one that is taken care by your microcontroller. So when the wheel is rotating the second time, it will get incremented to two. When the wheel is rotating the third time, this ma this metal goes over here and comes back over here, incremented to three, four, five. How much of how much of it is happening in a particular instance of time? That can be used as a calculation to find the RPM of this particular wheel. I hope you're getting a picture of what is happening in this magnetic. So it is detecting movement either in the form of infrared or in the form of ultrasonic or in the form of Hall effect. So it can be used for different applications like mobile phone cars or in my particular uh, industries and so on. So where am I using this IR proximity sensor? You can see that this is a conveyor belt over here. Earlier the count you can see that was 21 over here. Now this bottle process, crosses this pro particular proximity sensor and the count gets incremented to two. This is automation. Every time a person doesn't have to come here and increment the count of how many objects have passed by. So this is an automation example of this proximity sensor. This is the basic example of the proximity sensor when a particular person is speaking over the call. Normally when a phone is being detected by this proximity sensor it will not turn off the display but when a call is initiated and you keep it near your ear for example i hope you remember the case that it turns off the display how is it done by again by this proximity sensor it has the proximity sensor available here now looking at this ir sensor one of the type of the proximity how is it working earlier in this uh, presentation i told you that there are two types of uh, uh, ir sensors one is called as a transmitted type and the other one is called as a reflective type what do you mean by transmissive type there is a light source and there is a receiver over here if there is no object this light is providing photons over here this photons is absorbed by this photodiode which is increasing the current flow here but if there is an object coming in between no current no photons is apply, uh, getting absorbed over here which means this particular photodiode goes off and no current is flowing over here so this is my transmitter on one side and there is a observer on the other side so what is happening over here when an object comes no current flow when there is no object light from here with the form of photons is helping in current flow which is requiring this power supply so this is the transmissive type 
sensor that is a transmitter on one side and the observer on the other side. But when it comes to the particular second type, reflective type, you can see that the transmitter and reflector both are adjacent to each other. They are not afar off. So one will transmit, this will hit an object, it can be human being or any object over there, and this hits the object and comes back. And this works on this particular principle. Transmitter, receiver, adjacent to each other over here. This transmits the light and this, that is infrared light over here, which is heat, which cannot be seen. And that light, when it hits the target, comes back over here. And this is how it is able to detect the object. So this is what you call as a reflective type of another IR radiation. Next one is the ultrasonic. What do you mean by an ultrasonic? This is the principle that is used in uh, uh, mammals. Like uh, you can see that in the case of bats or you can see that in the ca case of blue whales, how do they are not able to see during the nighttime, but how do they communicate and fly? They use this ultrasonic signal. So what is happening over here? You have a supply, you have a ground, you have a trigger, which means it sends an ultrasonic signal. It hits a particular object. After it hits the object, it comes back. It echoes and comes back. Depending on the time it takes, you can measure the distance. That is what is the purpose of this ultrasonic sensor. So it transmits a signal through one side that is triggering it and it gets echoed and comes back. How much time is it taking is the, uh, you know, the important part for my distance parameter. But you will not take the entire time. Please remember the object is here. It takes one time instant, two time instants over here, which means one is reflecting and one is transmitting part. So this time divided by two will be equivalent to my distance. As you can see here, it is transmitting, but the object is available here, but it is taking another double time for it to come back over here. Half of this, half of this, adding it together, it becomes one. So this time taken divided by two will be giving me the distance of the particular object that is available. Next one, relays. Why do I require a relay? Relay is nothing but a device. Until now, you saw that LCD display, like uh, any output devices that you connect does not, may not require any output uh, additional uh, voltages. They may work with DC voltage itself. But in the case of some applications, like uh, for example, you want to control a tube light, or you want to control a fan, or you want to control a AC, uh, or it, uh, uh, what you say, it can be a television, whatever it may be, all these come under a common category of AC appliances. Now, you are working with the microcontroller, which is working with 5 volt, which is DC in nature. If you want to control an AC mechanism, is it possible? Not at all. You cannot control the, you cannot connect the output of your uh, microcontroller directly to the AC and turn it on and turn it off. Why? 5 volt is here, 220 volt is here. This is AC, this is DC. They are not at all related to each other. Now, what do I need in that case? I need someone in between who is helping me in connecting these two. And that is where this relay comes into picture. This relay is also called as an electronic switch. It is a switch over here that converts this particular, that is, it is like a bridge between the particular uh, output of an electronic microcontroller to an electrical appliance over here. That is the purpose of this particular relay. Now, how is it turned on and turned off? That is using this particular principle. So you can look at a basic example where you have a particular light bulb connector over here. Two wires are connecting this one positive and the other one negative connecting to this light bulb over here. Sorry if it does not look like a light bulb. What is happening over here? This positive is connected directly. So when you have a particular switch over here, what will happen? This particular switch when it is on, supply is given and it comes to the ground over here, a loop is formed. So what is happening over here you can understand that the light bulb goes on when the switch is in the off position light bulb is off because it is an open circuit over here now this is an ac appliance how do i convert connect it to a, a particular adrenaline now what i'm going to do is this wire which was available connected to this light bulb i'm going to break that wire in between and i'm going to connect this particular relay in between over here and this is the remaining part of my circuit. So I'm breaking the circuit and I'm connecting it to the normal uh, connected uh, normally open part of this particular circuit. So you can see that when I connect it to this particular pin over here, this relay, it has two pins over here. NC, NO, normally connected, normally open. So when there is no supply voltage, 
that is given from my Arduino. When no supply voltage is given to this particular relay, you can see that there is no attraction of this metal plate to this position. So which means that this relay is normally open and it is normally connected to that particular point over here. When there is a voltage applied from my Arduino, my Arduino will now give an output voltage of for example 5 volt. From where my particular digital pin of my Arduino, it is giving that 5 volt. What will happen over there? This 5 volt will turn on this particular coil which will try to pull this particular metal plate down. Now what is going to happen? There is a short circuit path over here. So this is equivalent to turning on my particular relay and this position is equivalent to turning off my particular relay. So this NO is the one that I am going to connect to this particular part over here. As I told you in this part I am going to connect when there is two wires over here with this light bulb and relay in between which pin should I connect my particular relay? Is it the NC or the NO? When I turn on the device, when I want to turn on the light bulb, what should I do? It should be in NO position. As I told you, when output is applied over here, that is when the switch comes to the NO position. So this is where it is connected to the NO position. And this NC position is left open. So normally the relay is kept in NC position and when the supply is applied from the particular uh, uh, Arduino that is given with 5 volt over here or any microcontroller, what will happen? It will come to the NO position and this creates a short circuit part and that is how current flows. So AC supply which is given here is controlled by this relay just by the use of a DC voltage which could not be done directly. So as I told you earlier, DC cannot be used to turn on an AC 5 volt. I need an AC supply and that is where this comes into picture. This is the use of this particular relay and the explanation of that is given over here. Next, these are the circuits that I use for this and these are connected to the corresponding pins of a particular relay and this is a simple example of that pin mode relay which is an output pin. So from your Arduino it is connected from the output pin. So I hope you understand that relay is not a sensor. It is an actuator. It is an actuator category. It is connected to the output of a particular device. Based on that, you're going to say, hi, what is to be done? Some interval and low for some particular time. What is going to happen? The light bulb which is connected to will be on for the particular interval, off for that particular interval. But this is an electrical device. Please understand. Earlier, we were using electronic devices like LED and so on, which did not require the use of this particular relay. It was not required. But when I'm using electric electrical devices, I need to use this particular relay over there. So this interfacing of relays can be of different types. This is a two channel relay. You can see that two channels are available on this particular relay and there are three pins as I told you. What are the three pins available over here? One is going to be the common pin, another one is normally connected, other one is going to be normal open. So these are the different types of uh, relays that are available. This relay can be as I told you two channel. It can work in either 5 volt or it can work in 3.3 volt. 5 volt is the one that you will normally use for your Arduino and the 3.3 volt as we see it can be used for your ESP8266 or ESP32 types of node MCU. So that is where it varies. So they are different not only two channel. You can have relays which have eight channels which means that eight channels means eight electrical devices I can connect to this particular relay over here and all of them are connected through this normally open, normally connected and your common pin. And this is your power supply pin which is connected to the microcontroller side. This is the one that is connected to the bulb or whatever the electrical gadget whatever you have and this is the one that is connected to the electronic side. The supply input one, input two, ground. Why do I need two inputs? Because I have two relays. So Supply and ground, the supply is my 5 volt that is given over here. This 5 volt is now going to be either in non connected mode means it is going to turn on that electrical device and that device is given a particular supply of 220 volt or whatever. Doesn't have to be 220 volt, any voltage greater than 5 volt which cannot be controlled by my microcontroller 9 volt or it could be 20 volt, whichever device that is there which is not applicable in the 5 volt range can be controlled using this particular relay. Okay, and this is a basic uh, example of the particular relay which I told you earlier. Next type of actuator that is available is the solenoid. What is a solenoid? It is an electromagnetic lock based on electrical and mechanical movement over here. It can turn, it can uh, unlock my particular door or it can lock my particular door. So when it is attracted over here, it is moving my coil, uh, it is moving this particular core inside which is equivalent to unlocking the device. And when this core is moved outside, it is equivalent to locking that particular device. So this solenoid is equivalent to your door knob which is available over there. And this particular door knob can be used to open or it can be used to close the particular door. And this is done by this, the principle 
principle of electromagnetic. So using your software itself, you can control the uh, opening and closing of a door, which is done by this device. Please remember the name solenoid. Next one is a simple display, LCD display. What is this LCD? Liquid crystal display. It works on the uh, uh, principle of CRT. And what is happening over here? It consumes very less power. It is not LED, it is LCD. It is the opposite of L L uh, uh, LED. When you look into LCD displays available around you, you will see that if you want to display some value, you will see dots over there, which means LCD works on the principle of turning off that particular light to make the particular uh, uh, value be displayed over there. If I want to display the value, for example, uh, A, okay. And if I want to display this value A over there, all these digits inside will be turned off over there. All these pixels will be off over there turned off. So it works on that particular principle. Turning a light on and making that value getting displayed is not the principle of LCD. Turning that particular uh, uh, pixel of value off and making that value getting displayed is the value is the working principle of this LCD. So when you look at this term 16 cross 2, what do you mean by the 16 cross 2 is there are 16 such columns over there and there is two rows available. So 16 cross 2 available. And when you see this, you will have eight pins over here, data pins. The data pins are coming from the LCD over here. And it is also, you can also read the data of your LCD. So it is bidirectional by nature. Whatever data needs to be displayed on the particular LCD display is given from your microcontroller. What is being displayed and if you want to read that on your microcontroller can also be done over here. So you need eight pins for that. Then you have the read, write, register select, which is used for selecting the register, what you need to do with that. And all these supply ground pins are available. So these many approximately 12 to 14 pins are required for this LCD display. A suggestion that I would give you is you can use another driver which is used for that. LCD driver. So LCD driver is one which is available, which converts this 14 pins into its corresponding four pins only. What are the four pins? I hope you remember the I2C protocol. It has the I2C driver over there, LCD I2C driver. That is the name of this driver. What will happen? It will use SEL, it will use SDA, it will use VCC, and it will use Brown. That's all. So instead of using 12 pins connecting to my microcontroller and taking a lot of space, I can make, convert that into just four pins. Whatever data needs to be transferred to the display, I can just transfer it serially using I2C protocol using this SEL and SDA. So this is the particular concept of that. So this is your uh, LCD. It takes very less space, less power consumption, sufficient brightness, and you can vary the brightness using a potential meter which is available over there. And flickering rate is also very less. So this is the advantages of this LCD display. And next we are going to be looking into the motor driver, L298. If you have a robo car or something with you, you will have wheels over there. You cannot use any normal DC motor or any stepper motor or any servo motor over there. In this, you will be using the motor over here, which is uh, available. And that particular driver for that is your L289 particular driver. And this works on that particular principle of PWM to vary the speed. It was explained in the previous video and you can go through that. And this motor driver is used to connect it to your particular four wheels of your particular uh, robo. So for example, you have this motor driver which is available, which is connected to your Arduino. And this is a motor which is over here. The driver over here will provide the power supply to your particular uh, thing. So a driver which may require higher voltage, and this voltage may not be sufficient from your particular uh, Adreno. This is given through this particular 12 volt adapter. So this is connected to this particular driver module. Please remember that driver is anything that is connected on uh, in addition to the Arduino board. It could be Wi-Fi driver, it could be Bluetooth driver, it could be any other Ethernet driver or it could be even this particular uh, motor driver. Any type of driver. Driver is a common term which is used to give the external power supply and the corresponding output over there. And that is helping you in connecting those devices to this particular. Now, other few sensors that are available is, for example, the smoke and gas sensor. Smoke and gas sensor can help you in detecting LPG, propane, butane, methane, and all these kinds of gases. And these gases can be helpful in for uh, uh, home-based applications. For example, you are in a room, you keep the sensor over there, and suddenly there's suffocation due to carbon dioxide. You can give an alert system based on the gas that is detected over there. And all of these are done by measuring the particular particle available in the air, which is part, uh, parts per million. 
how much of particles are available there that is measured using this NQ. And this uh, smoke and gas sensor is given by this MQ. Based on this, they have different values, MQ2, MQ3, MQ7, uh, uh, 9 and so on. And those values tell that what gas it is going to be detecting. So that is what is this particular. You can see in this example, if there is smoke detected over here, voltage is going to be high. If there is no smoke over here, voltage is going to be low. Again, reminder, sensors, voltage and resistance only. Please remember that. Now, this is a uh, simple, uh, what you say, alcohol sensor. So, when they, when someone is drunk, this can be used by traffic police people. When a person is blowing and alcohol is detected over there, the voltage over there increases. And else, the voltage over there is decreasing. So, this can be used in those kinds of applications. It is different from the MQ gas sensor. I hope uh, you are able to understand. That is smoke, calm gas sensor. But here, it is alcohol, detecting only alcohol. And it is used in breath uh, analysis to catch drunk and drive uh, another carpet. Next one is the color sensor. Color sensor, as I told you earlier, different colors which are falling will be falling on this uh, LEDs over here, photodiode. And when this photodiode detects this particular light, it will tell what is the particular color. So this uh, and uh, it will uh, 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 process it, which can be used for image processing, color identification, and other object tracking devices. So any object, for example, line follow robot, what color is available? You don't have to go with the traditional black and white color. You can go with different colors over there, and if this color is detected for example this is red color and green color over here if red color is the one that the uh, robo has to follow you can make sure that red is the one that is given as input over here when red color line is available that particular path this particular motor will be followed that particular microcontroller so this is just a basic example and lastly looking into a simple example of a tilt sensor so what is happening in this tilt sensor you can see that it is having this particular uh, sensor when an uh, when this particular uh, tank is filled with a particular object the tilt over here takes place and it is when the tilt is happening over here it detects that a particular uh, movement is available over here uh, previously this tilt sensor was made up of mercury so when there was a change in this mercury level over here it was not center and it was moving to the side they would give a particular signal over here to the outside people that that uh, the, this particular uh, tank is getting filled so this tank could be uh, 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 very large in size, which could be very deep also. So in these cases, humans may not be able to always check how much of uh, uh, objects are there inside this particular particle. So in this case, they use this particular tint sensor, which is going to detect this particular uh, uh, amount of material that is available over here. Object falling into it, it is increasing the quantity over here, and this tint sensor gets the movement over here. Depending upon the tilt sensor movement, mercury is getting another node over here, and this modern uh, sensor will give the signal to this particular light, not directly. You can also give it to a microcontroller and turn off this conveyor belt also. Light, you can connect it directly over here to turn it off. But if you want to turn off the conveyor belt, you cannot do it directly. You will use a microcontroller over here, tilt sensor connected to this microcontroller, microcontroller processing the data, and it is turning off this conveyor belt. And in that place, I hope you will understand, comes the purpose of your particular relay. Conveyor belt working in AC supply, high voltage, you cannot directly turn it off using the particular uh, display over here. You will be using a particular relay to turn off this particular uh, uh, conveyor belt. So I hope you got an idea about what is happening in the world of sensors and actuators. I have just given an input. Hope you are able to dig into them further and do good projects based on this. Thank you so much.